As we dive into this topic of bias, we wanted to look at bias within healthcare. We found a startling statistic too. Black women are two to three times more likely to die during childbirth than white women. Looking at the numbers here locally in Kansas, of those women who die due to pregnancy-related causes, 70 per 100,000 are black. Compare that to white women who account for 22 per 100,000. In Missouri, the numbers are even higher, 92 for every 100,000 deaths involve black women versus 22 for white women. The increased rate is similar for infant mortality. Black babies, two to three times more likely to die at birth. While there are a number of factors that play into these statistics, some experts and advocates point to bias in health care as being a contributing one. And it's not just African Americans. Latina and indigenous women are disproportionately affected too. 41 Action News anchor Caitlin Knut has stories from two women who say bias left their lives forever changed. Although it's been eight years, Sapphire Garcia Lise can still remember the excitement surrounding the birth of her second daughter, Ella. Everything had gone perfectly fine with my pregnancy. And then I got to 38 and a half weeks and I noticed that she wasn't moving as much. Garcia Lee says she visited her doctor and shared her concerns, but was told that was normal. So despite a nagging suspicion, she returned home only to seek out a second opinion at the hospital two days later. They did a sonogram and they couldn't find a heartbeat. She had passed away in utero. And it turns out that she had her cord wrapped several times around her neck and her blood supply had cut off. Heartbroken and devastated, she delivered Ella, knowing there would be no first breath, no first cry. Holding her stillborn daughter, she says she couldn't help but wonder if her race prompted the doctor to disregard her concerns. And if they had caught that in time when she was still moving some, then I think that she probably could have been saved. Research shows women of color are more likely to experience bias in health care. Some experts say this dates back to the 1800s when James Sims, often referred to as the father of OBGYN, performed experimental surgeries on enslaved women without anesthesia. So historically what that has done is that has created a bias that black women can take more pain that they're stronger. As an assistant professor with the University of Kansas School of Medicine, Dr. Sharla Smith presents this very topic to local medical providers. So there's an assumption that if you're black, that you're from a particular community, you, you're uneducated, you don't have health insurance, you don't have a good job, um, and so you don't have the knowledge to actually know how to take care of yourself. For Kansas City mom, Izula Maximillan, she's convinced this bias prevented hospital staff from taking her seriously when she went to the emergency room, suspecting her intense pain was the result of another ectopic pregnancy. When I spoke to the admissions officer, I told him that I was pregnant, that I've had ectopic pregnancies in the past and that I'm having one right now. And he told me to go wait and sit down. According to the Mayo Clinic, ectopic pregnancies where a fertilized egg implants in the fallopian tube can cause life-threatening bleeding. But Maximilian says that day, besides giving her a drug test, no diagnostic tests were done for four to five hours as she floated in and out of consciousness until finally blood work came back showing she had sepsis. And that now they wanted to do an ultrasound and figure out what was going on. And um, when they did the ultrasound, they were able to confirm that there was, an, there was a burst in my fallopian tube. She'd lost half her blood supply due to internal bleeding and was rushed into surgery, but not before she first said goodbye to her young son. I do remember him, you know, like saying that he loved me and me telling him that I loved him and being concerned it was going to be the last time that I saw him. After the surgery, she recalls opening her eyes with a sense of purpose, vowing to share her story so no other woman of color experiences the trauma she endured. These are just some of the stories being shared with doctors here in Missouri and Kansas, and they've caught the attention of the American College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, or ACOG. So what I would say to these, these folks who are sharing their stories um, is that I believe you and that ACOG believes that this is a, is a problem within our own practice and the larger system of healthcare um, and wellness. Dr. Colleen McNicholas adds while education and accountability are a necessary step, there's more that needs to be done on a broader level. You know, simple things, expanding Medicaid, having access to preventative care, looking at what 
access in rural communities, for example, looks like. That's where the Uzazi Village, a nonprofit in Kansas City, helps fill the gaps. What we're trying to do is reverse those health outcome tra uh, trends and help uh, our community families have healthier pregnancies and healthier babies. Uzazi Village works directly with women and families, offering them prenatal and postpartum education, resources, and support, including providing expectant moms with doulas. A doula is a professional labor support person, so a professional labor coach, uh, except that our doulas are also trained to work with women during pregnancy and in their postpartum periods. For Garcia Lise, it's a service she knows well. She became a doula in Wichita after losing Ella. Also, she could better advocate for women of color and their babies. I've seen clear-cut cases where the work I do as a doula has paid off with a better outcome for the mom or the baby. It's a fight to help others that keeps her motivated and helps keep Ella's memory alive. Caitlin Canute, 41 Action News.